need to tell you about an incredible New Zealand documentary which is due out very, very soon. It's a feature length documentary called Pecking Order. I'm part of the Crashitch Poultry Club. I love chickens. Uh, my friends probably describe me as different. My wife says that I love them more than her. Well, do you want to go in a pen with a heater on it? Eh? It follows members of the Christchurch Poultry, Bantam and Pigeon Club in the lead up to the New Zealand Champs. As you might imagine, the film features some very colourful and interesting characters. Why well, get off your butts and do it. Picking Order is directed by Christchurch-based filmmaker Slavko Martinov. Now he's the man behind the mockumentary propaganda. This is a film about psychological warfare. A specific type of warfare designed to distract, misinform, but trust me, trust me, and anesthetize the brain. Propaganda won the grand prize at the Best Film Award at the Traverse City Film Festival in Michigan, co-founded by Oscar-winning director Michael Moore. And Slavko is with us in the studio. Good morning, and thank you for your time this morning. You're very welcome, Chris. Nice to see you. Where did you get the idea to create a documentary essentially about chicken lovers? Yeah, well, we were making a documentary in uh, in Melbourne at the time, and it was one of those lovely accidents. And I saw a couple of women selling high-end organic chicken feed. And always curious, I went over to them because I'm like, who's, who's buying this? Like, this is yeah. a terrible business. You know, it's not going to last long. What a long. bad business model, you would think. Terrible, like, that's what I'm thinking. But uh, there's my ignorance on show. I went over and I'm like, oh, so who buys this? And having a nice chat with them. And I know the business was very successful, and they were mentioning all the people who buy it. And then they just nonchalantly, nonchalantly at the end go, Oh, and of course, all the top breeders on the national show circuit. And it was one of those moments where I'm like, uh, the what? And they're like, yeah, the national show circuit. I'm like, best in show with chickens, but it's real. And they're looking at me like I'm stupid for not knowing. But, but that was the seed where I looked at my co-producer, Mike, and I'm like, yeah, that's something. And uh, started pursuing it. Yeah. And from there, it's just grown into this beast. Yeah. Um, now... Forgive my ignorance, I've been to cat shows, guinea pig shows. Yeah. They come across as quite light-hearted events when you first go there, but yeah. uh, animal lovers take these sorts of competitions very seriously, don't they? But yeah. they are self-aware that what they're doing is quite serious, but they understand how it can be taken as slightly quirky and almost obs obsessional, if that's a word. Yeah, no, it is obsessional, um, and I don't say that as a criticism at all, but some people like going to shows with their animals, they like the event, they like being there and they like participating because it's a fraternity, a camaraderie. Mm. But a lot of people who have been in it for a long time, uh, the cat or guinea pig or bird they're showing is not a mistake. It's taken generations of very serious breeding to try and get that perfect bird or perfect cat because usually it's according to a standard of beauty that's been set mm. and um, yeah no it's really serious really it takes an enormous amount of work to get the perfect chicken. He wanted to be the kingpin at the national show. People don't like being beaten. Because of the politics going on in the club we are concerned that some birds might be poisoned. Ah! I was on the uh, the Christchurch Poultry Bantam and Pigeon Club website just yep. before and I was quite amazed at the process they go through and how to get the feet correct and the feathers to look to one side. It's quite a big deal, isn't it? Oh yeah, like there's, well there's the presenting on the day, like every, everything just perfect and having them shampooed and conditioned and blow dried just the right way. And the chickens, they, right? Absolutely. And that they stand just the right way and they train them with a judging stick to make them stand to attention not tilt. Some Australian judges like them to tilt a little bit. Judges have got their own thing. And that's just presentation. But to get to that point, to have that perfect sweet bird, it takes so much uh, genetic engineering, I think is one way of saying it. Well, because if they've got a feather out of place or their feet don't sit just right or their comb's not perfect, they can breed years and years of birds and they have books covering every year of breeding and mix them and breed them and outtake certain things and put certain things in to try and get an absolutely perfect bird. It's quite an art, a hell of a skill. 
Slavko, are these chickens, are they deemed as family pets? Are they deemed as oh, good question. award trophies? What are the chickens to the chicken breeders yeah. and those who compete in these competitions? It's different for all of them. And some of the questions I asked were, are they your pets or your friends? And for some of them, there's one girl in there, Sarah, um, who's in her mid-teens, and she's a chicken whisperer. She doesn't even know it, but she can take a bird that's temperamental or really upset and hold it in her arms like a baby, and it'll just go all soft and quiet. And for her, they're her family. Wow. She's not known anything different, and um, for others, they'll get quite cross at me for asking the question. You know, it's a serious business. Um, and then half of them would say they're their friends. Even though if they don't win, oh, they'll end up as pot roasters. Um, they do? They, yeah, but they, they, they eat them? Yeah, but they, so some of them do. <laughs> like it's brutal. So, so, if, and yet so wait a minute. So if they're the also chicken, their friends at the same time, I know. That's interesting. So if the chicken gets third place, then oh, well, that you're, you're useless. So Mars will cook you tonight. Yeah, like you can have a perfectly good... It's in the oh. film, actually, at one point. There's one of them, and he's like, he goes, you know, this is a fine... I'm like, that's a fine-looking bird. Not that I know what I'm talking about, but, yeah. I'm, but I was getting there. And then he's just... Look at these spurs, you know, that are on the back of a leg of a bird. They're they're loose. I've got to have tight spurs. He's going for the chop. <laughs> like, wow. It's beautiful, but it's it's brutal when it comes to breeding. And yet, if it's a winning bird and it's been of great service and it's bred, that thing gets to live out its life in a beautiful paddock, like like royalty. God, it doesn't get touched. Imagine if the same sentiment was used at child beauty pageants in America. Well, in fact, it probably has to be. Well, I mean, but that's another That's story. a whole other documentary. That's, that's, another do- time. that's the next <laughs> documentary. Um, but it's interesting you say that because you, you were telling me off air that uh, when you were directing this film, the chicken lovers don't like to use the word chicken. No. Why not? It's not. I think chicken is a phrase they only use if you're eating it. Um, they use the word fowl, bird, or its specific breed name, uh, but but never a chicken. I think maybe once I heard a judge refer to it as a chicken, and I think he was trying to be kind of cute or funny. But Didn't I've, go heard, down well. I've actually heard characters mutter things under their breath, not very nice, when they hear members of the public say chicken. It's some big no-no. Really? I don't, <laughs> I don't understand that one. Is a film... Director, I first came across your work, did I stumble across, I think I might have, on, on YouTube. It was actually a yeah. YouTube-created film in a way called That's Propaganda. Right. Right. And this is a departure from that, isn't it? So for those who haven't seen oh, that, and maybe they've been that. sitting under a rock, it's Propaganda. Uh, the whole premise of it is to give the impression it's actually this movie from North Korea saying, right. and it basically takes heavy criticism at Western cultures. And by, the, right. t- by the time you finish watching it, you feel guilty for being a Westerner. For you as a filmmaker, is it all about finding an incredibly powerful story regardless of the genre? Because when I saw you've made a movie on chickens, I thought, yeah. well, this ain't North Korea. This is, yeah, it's unexpected. Yes. Um, I don't limit myself in any way. My natural inclination is to pursue political films and documentaries, but also make narrative features as well. There's no limit to it. Um, this one came by, it was a happy accident because I happened to ask some questions of someone. It was an irresistible story. Um, but in saying that, um, I've brought politics and ideas and things that matter to it. It mm. would be easy to go, look, it's best in show with chickens, that one simple story arc. Um, but there's so much more you can bring to it and there's so much more going on, you know. A paradoxical relationship with animals is just one theme to explore there and it's all there. Um, but, but yeah, it was unexpected. Even for me. Picking order, it is out shortly, isn't it? You've got a, a grand opening and uh, also a, a world premiere. Give us those details. Uh, that'll be in Toronto on the 29th of April. will be our world premiere at a festival there. And then 9th of May for the New Zealand International Film Festival in Christchurch will be our premiere here. Best bird in show international. That's my ultimate goal. This is what they're looking for, is the complete package. It's not rocket science, really, is it? You end up a pot roaster, probably. Oh. <laughs> yes. 
It's the end of the Christchurch Poultry Club. You beat me. When you're at the top, there's always someone knocking you off the perch. That's really exciting, isn't it? It was not easy, you know, being a chalk fancier. <laughs>